was a rumble in the jungle once I heard dad was outside again counting birds And mama plugged in the nightlight and I saw the queen of the world Mama plugged in the nightlight and Welcome I back to the Golden Hour Birth Podcast with Liz and Natalie In our last episode, we heard Alyssa tell her birth story. Alyssa Alter, also known as the Amy Poehler of Vaginas, joined us to tell us all about her birth and how it shaped her journey to working as a woman's health expert and motherhood advocate. If you haven't listened to last week's episode, do yourself a favor and go give it a listen. Alyssa's story is not one to be missed. This is part two of the episode where we do a deep dive into all things postpartum. So we'll just jump right back in. Enjoy. I got more routine checkups after your delivery. I did. My, again, my OB, she's awesome. I love her. Um, She, again, I was texting with her and then I went back one week postpartum, Mm -hmm. which was also like, it was, it was great because I was constantly hearing that I was healing really well. Good. And I, I needed that in every way. Yeah. But it was also really hard because I like looked at my husband. And I was like, I can't walk a block. Like, how am I? I'm getting in a car. Like, what if we hit a bump? Like, wh- how am I getting there? And so the whole thing, I <laughs> I took a car, you know, and it's like I left myself like 20 minutes to get downstairs. I was like, I don't know. What if I need a break? What if I have to like lie down in the elevator? Like, I don't know. And Jeremy was like, should I bring the baby? And I was like, listen, dude, you have to figure out your own fucking logistics, but he's going to need to be fed in 45 minutes. So this is where my boobs will be. Like, <laughs> so like he pushed the stroller and met me there. It was like a whole thing. Um, But I went back one week postpartum. I think I went back week one, two, and three. And then I went back, like my, my OB was like, I definitely want to see you weeks one and two. And then you can decide if you want to come back the third week. And I was like, "Mm, yeah. And then there was one point where I called and I was like, I need to be seen today. I was like, there are one of three things happening. Either I popped a stitch the swelling is changing, and so my butt feels different, or my rectum is falling out. I have my fingers crossed the option is B, and that this is a sign of healing and things just feel different, but I'm going to need confirmation because I am not looking. <laughs> like, I am not emotionally prepared yeah. to look at that yet. Mm-hmm. I am hanging on by a thread. So then I went in and... um it was confirmed that the swelling was going down. And that was a, that was a great appointment. That one was really, that morale was high. (laughs) Um, That's good. They don't tell you about the um, itchiness, like when your stitches start, all that stuff. And you're just like, what's going on down there? Like, yeah, I didn't. But then like when you, when you think about it though, and this is like the work that I do, like with pelvic floor stuff, it's like, these are muscles. Like, think about if you got like, like a, like sometimes when you get like a mole removed, like on your arm, they have to like really cut it out and you get a couple stitches, right? Or like, you remember like you're a kid and you like fall and scrape. We have kids. You, they scrape things, right? And then there's like a scab and it's itchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Or like if you fall so hard, you get a scab, it's like sore in the surrounding area that was not injured, but is nearby Mm -hmm. because there's like fluid and whatever and bruising. Like these are muscles and skin. They also tend to have like, there's like a lot of nerves. So you feel it even more, but like the healing process is the healing process. And that's like something that I felt really grateful in this horrible situation, having so much information because it empowered me to go to my doctor and say, or is the swelling changing and I'm feeling something different? And then like when I started, oh, well, like, and another, 
when I started pelvic floor PT, I also like my right, my tear was on the right side and my right hip is my special hip. And that's from a chorus line. And I was feeling my hip like all jacked up and like my right inner thigh was like really insanely tight in a way that is like not my body. And when I saw the PT, I was like, I have a feeling this is all related to my tear. Like I'm feeling this. And I think that this side might be pulling on. And I like said stuff. And then when she examined me, she's like, "Mm -hmm, that's what's happening. She was like, and also this. And it's coming from like, if we loosen the scar tissue or whatever. But my, my knowledge of my body and what my normal is allowed me to then articulate this is not my normal you might so you can't look at me and say everything's fine you say okay okay medically there's like not an issue but i'm actually not fine because this is not normal so what is this you need we need more answers and that's something i tell everyone whether you're a client of mine a friend not anyone everyone (laughs) do yourself a solid and Look at your vulva with a mirror. Look at your anatomy. Again, I was not ready to do this at like two weeks postpartum, but I did decide that before my six week check, right? Because they were like, your stitches will be healed. You will be, again, like medically, clinically healed by then. And I had had enough check ins to know that like there hadn't been any complications Mm -hmm. thus far. So I was like, I'm going to go look because this way I can ask specific questions if I have them. And also if I freak the fuck out, they're going to give me a pill for that or like (laughs) commit me or (laughs) send me to the ER. Like I will be in the doctor's office. That is a safe place. (laughs) And I really, it was, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't see the scar. There was no bruising. There was, I mean, I could see that, like, I couldn't actually see the scar, but I could see that, like, the skin was different, that, like, something had happened. And I was like, mm-hmm. it'd be expected. And then I did have, like, a couple questions because I was like, oh, my God, I have prolapse. My organs are falling out. That's what that is. And I went in. I was like, what's that? And she was like, this looks like a perfectly, like, you are right on track. This is a six-week postpartum vagina. Remember, it'll take a little more time for, like, the muscles to whatever. And I was like, no, no, no. What is that? That there. That thing I see. And she was like, "Mm -hmm. that's your rectum. I was like, what? I was like, so it's falling out. And she was like, no. And she explained, and I'm saying this for other people's benefit too, is that like, obviously, right, a whole person came out of there, right? Like things are more open so you can see everything. And you're, and if you look this up on Google, like your rectum is right next to your vagina. Mm -hmm. It is right there. (laughs) So also like, you're welcome. Now you know that. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) and if you do have any sort of prolapse postpartum um especially rectocele like a rectal prolapse if you have to poop like if there's poop in there you might feel some heaviness in your vagina and it's because your rectum is right there right there look at those anatomy (laughs) fingers take a look look at those pictures and and here's the thing and trust them those pictures are not lying to you it's right there right there (laughs) but um yeah and then I did um I did pelvic floor PT Mm -hmm. postpartum which I also felt again I felt really lucky to know that it existed I already knew of good um offices that had good reputations Mm -hmm. uh not far from me that I would be able to go to. I could bring the baby if I needed to. Um, the thing that that sucks is that a lot of that, I mean, it's changing, which is great, but like a lot of that stuff's not covered by insurance. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I it is not lost on me. Like I am so grateful that I'm able to, to pay for it and get the care that I needed. Um, 
been like really like from that birth experience though like my recovery has required pelvic floor pt i see a therapist i started working with a psychiatrist just to make sure cuz i went on zoloft and i then still wasn't sleeping so when needed i have a prescription to help me sleep i also have for like more acute panic attacks from the ptsd you know, a prescription for clonopin if I need it Mm -hmm. and to like check in and make sure that my medic, you know, yeah, everything's safe and good and balanced. And I did acupuncture and massages and I tried this technique called TRE, which is trauma and tension release exercises. I've done Reiki. I've done (laughs) like it's because it really fucked me up that I was like yeah you know bring on a crystal like if (laughs) if nothing if nothing else like if that then 45 minutes of essentially meditation right and just like calming energy is going to help me feel better I'm into it because I'm also like I don't I'm into a placebo effect I also love science like give me give me any and all of it (laughs) right because like the ultimate goal is to feel better and so if I feel better I feel better. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good because you're just hilarious. <laughs> but that <laughs> is hilarious. And the the kind of like ironic thing is on like Monday or Tuesday this week, I decided to like Google more about OP babies, sunny side up, but occipital posterior. Oh, yeah. Like we had. And one of them was like, you're more likely to hemorrhage. And I was like, interesting. And then hearing you talk about it, that happened. Yeah. And you're more likely to tear. I don't know if you had an extensive tearing with that one. Second degree. But like second degree. I had, I mean, I didn't feel, I I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel like, you know, they were like all the way to my asshole because I was only second degree. So yeah. Yeah. Yes. What's great about a second degree is it does not involve your asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Third degree, you start in flirting. You're like, it's like um, you're flirting. Yeah. It's like, it's like, like, it's like heavy flirting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah, fourth degree is. It's all the way there. You're, you're all the way. You you nailed it. You're like, in just tip zone. <laughs> you're, yeah. <laughs> you're basically engaged, married. It's 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 all you're all in. You're all in. Look at, don't they say that on like The Bachelor and the Bachelorette? Like, no, like I am all in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if they don't, someone someone has or they should. Uh, I am not here to make friends. I am all in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's and it, well, something else that was amazing was that, like I started talking about it and then it turns out like I know a bunch of women who had a fourth degree tear and then they were like, like to reassure me, which was so kind because I also like. This also showed me like there's just not a lot of data around insert women's health concern. Like <laughs> there just isn't, they don't care about us. They, I mean, and at this point with the way things are going, it's like, uh, clearly the government hates us. But like, I was like, what does this, what does this mean for the rest of my life? What does this mean when I go through menopause and my hormones change again and I lose muscle tone? Cause that's what happens, right? What happens I want to, I'm like, I wanted to have two kids. Like, I'm, do I not get to do that? Like, how will I even carry a pregnancy if downstairs is so compromised? Like, you know, and that's where then I'm also like, no, I understand how muscles work. Like they're resilient, but like, I can't, but at the same time, these friends who'd had it were like, the second baby is so much easier. You won't even tear or it'll be like a first degree. And I was like, but I know how muscles work. Like if you tear the same muscle Mm -hmm. repeatedly, you're screwed. Yeah. Like, and that extensively. And then it's like some data is like the chances of tearing like that are like nothing. And then others are like, (laughs) if you've torn that bad, you're almost definitely going to do it again. And I'm like, 
Yeah. Which what one? <laughs> you know, and then and then coming to, to like dealing with or thinking about the um like I really fully believe like there's no one right way to have a baby. Mm-hmm. Right. Like whether that's out of your vagina, out of your belly, through a surrogate, adopting, whatever. There is no one right way. Right. There just isn't. And and we're really lucky that we have these options. And I realized in the like because this is also I'm like I'm probably still like two weeks postpartum and I'm like, I'm I'm not going to be able to have another baby. Like, I don't want one right now, but also I want to be able to. They, I want two kids. Like, I, what are we going to do? <laughs> um, even though, like, at that stage, like, I didn't need to have the answer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was not the time. Um, but then being faced with how, like, I do not think that there is the right way to have a baby, but yet sort of unraveling or like, and like unearthing this sort of internalized conditioning and belief that like, well, I have to have another successful vaginal birth to heal, to prove what? Yeah. And then I was like, where is this coming from? Like, (laughs) I don't think this, why is this happening? Like, I'm clearly going to have a C-section next time. (laughs) Also, my doctor said you should probably have a (laughs) C-section. And it was this whole thing. And I was like, why do I believe this? Like, what's going on? And and again, like, I'm in this position where I'm so educated on this. I'm so informed. And if this is what I'm feeling, and like, I have access, I can go to PT, I can go to the doctor. Uh, anyone can tear their butthole. Like, what about the women who tear their buttholes and have to go back to work a week later or whatever? Like, yeah. How is that? How is that real? <laughs> Again, this goes back to my contractions. Like, how is this? This is the plan? Yeah. <laughs> who did this? Yeah. How have we not? It's just messed up with how pregnancy and birth is just such like a, well, every woman does it. So it's just like, just do it, get on with your life. And it's just how it is. But it's like, this is huge. Something that we went through. Uh Huge. And you don't realize it until after you have the baby. But it's also like, just funny because you're like, I think you're like conditioned to only know that babies can only come out of vaginas and like you're a failure if it comes out any other way beside your vagina and so like you know like people women have like these fears of c-sections I even me I have a fear of c-section and I was like so against it for my first son and now I'm pregnant again and I'm like eh, if it happens it happens like where was this the first time around I don't know yeah (sighs) I it's it's all of this it's we get this messaging explicitly but also implicitly like it is insidious it's everywhere it's from the beginning it's and it's deep and it's got to it's got to go like it doesn't serve anyone and I mean it's the this conversation is the exact same conversation about how you feed your baby like oh, yeah, that's the last thing going through my head. Like yeah. just fit, you just feed, feed the head. baby, just feed the baby. Doctor want to feed the baby. Head. Yeah, like doctors are probably formula fed. Like, mm-hmm. and why do I feel so bad? Why do I feel so guilty? For oh my god! god. Yeah. It's like, and even like when you whatever choice you make, it just like we can't fucking win. No. Whatever choice you make, you can't win. Mm-hmm. And again, like, how is that the given? And like you, you had said like this, this, everybody does it. So like, we just, we are conditioned to tolerate. And it's like, I know, um, I don't know the original source of this, but like, uh, Sashir Zameda recently in a, in a stand up set talked about how like, there, there's data now saying that like what our 
menstrual cramps, right? Not a contraction, which we also suffer through, <laughs> um, or waves that we breathe through and all of that. I, you know, I was trying to make a joke, not um, make a judgment on how people do labor, but um, that our menstrual cramps, what we feel, that's what men's heart attacks feel like. And that blows my mind because you see, I mean, I've never seen, thankfully, I've never seen someone in, like in real life have a heart attack. I think th- I I'd prefer to keep it that way, but yeah. I've seen it on TV and in movies and it's like, very dramatic and everybody's a really big deal. <laughs> and when I get my period, again, I'm just, I'm going to like hide a tampon up my sleeve, not think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's> like, <laughs> you know, not wear white pants and like, just, just carry on. And it's like, I'm having a heart attack in my uterus. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? It's like, I have that movie, like, not friends with benefits, no strings attached with Ashton Kutcher. And he like comes over and like brings up playlist. And she's like, it's a crime scene in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, like you, especially that first day, second day. Oh, yeah. Oh, you don't. We should like we're having heart attacks. Yeah. Not in our hearts. <laughs> like we need medical leave, which actually there are companies. Is that here in the States or was that somewhere else? Not in the States. Probably. I think it's like Norway. It's Scandinavia. Yeah, it's Norway. You're it's right. Norway. It's Norway. Or Denmark <laughs> got their shit together. Because they know what's up. That's like women get like three days a month mm-hmm. of menstrual leave if they need it. And it's like, God, just thank you for like just mm-hmm. acknowledging that this happens. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, and, and everyone's everyone's birth story and birth experience is different and unique. Like you could talk to another, another mom who has the same medical record as I do, like the same experience. And it'd be completely different. Mm -hmm. Like it, we all, but like clearly no one who's actually had a baby is like, yeah, six weeks should be standard leave. (laughs) Like no, (laughs) you're still crying at six weeks. You're still like changing your pad at six weeks. You're still changing your pit. You're still waking up soaked in sweat uh-huh. because you're having high, hot flashes because uh-huh. the hormonal changes you're going through are like basically menopause. Uh-huh. And and like, I mean, it is. It's also like if you just look at physiologically what's happening, like even just like in our brains at that point, we yeah. should not have any additional responsibilities. Oh. Like. <laughs> I shouldn't even be driving. <laughs> like no heavy machine. You're getting. You're living your life in two hour increments. Yeah. Like yeah, and your brain has rewired to literally, like, zoom in on that baby and hear nothing else. Our brain is that rewiring in our brain to be focused on the baby is literally like it's the lizard brain caveman part of us that keeps like human beings. Yeah. here like yeah. keeps us happening yeah that's the instinct is keep your baby alive yeah it's not like i have like motherly instincts to like i don't know no change a diaper yeah it's yeah just know how to like keep the baby from crying because the wolf's gonna come eat it or something yeah like and also it's just like the answer is always to like smell my skin or smell my boobs yeah. Like that's what the solution is. <laughs> like cuz cuz this baby just got here, knows nothing except me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You no, know, it can barely see. And <laughs> it's like, where am I? What's happening? Oh, I know that smell. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the smell I've been living in for the past nine months. <laughs> Wait, and oh, after 6 weeks you like kind of like hit a plateau where you're like, oh, "Okay, like I feel like I got this." And then like month four and you're like oh wait my hair's falling out (laughs) wait i hated that part that's like the part i'm not looking forward to again i don't want all my hair to fall out (laughs) all that it's it's so much hair Mm -hmm. and again i it's like what i've been telling people is like 
to expect in one shower, like when you put your fingers through your hair, that the amount that comes out is like the amount that when you clean your brush, which I don't know, I don't do that that often. It's like when I do, there's like a lot of hair in it. Yeah. Right. It's like, but it's like that amount every shower. Yeah. Oh, wow. Just yeah. constantly. I see hair. So no. luscious. <laughs> I, well, because, and you know, that's because during pregnancy, your hair doesn't fall out. Okay. So then it's just all the hair that would have fallen out. Just all happening at once. Being a woman is so cool. (laughs) (laughs) Is it? I've had a rough time. (laughs) I know. The thing that also like blows my mind, and you can probably speak to this um, even more, is that like, like I I do want to have another one. Yeah. Like, why? I mean, I know why. I know why but also like why (laughs) like I know what happens just get that scheduled c-section on the books honey (laughs) oh yeah yeah oh my god a hundred a hundred percent I remember asking my husband like what would you like would it be okay like how like you know we are having a baby like do you have any feelings like if next time like on a schedule the c-section he was like he's the best he was like you know it's your body so like whatever you want I was like okay I think I think that like just like for my anxiety like I think that really and like for my v- butthole and my vagina like my <laughs> act, like my yeah, my future um I think that that's the best option and he was like I like that and I was like really <laughs> he's like I did not like last time. He was like, and if I, he's like, I can't imagine with that being our experience, sitting here waiting for you to go and labor, like waiting for this to happen, waiting for you to start having contractions, waiting for like, he's like, I don't know. How would we? And I was like, that's what I was thinking. (laughs) Like, I really can't because of our specific experience where I can also totally see if you had a not that experience you could be like this is exciting we we don't know it's gonna be a surprise and then it's gonna happen you know like it's <laughs> but like in my case like I don't know that there's a strong enough sedative that would make that work out yeah and now my fear is that I'm like gonna schedule that c-section and then I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be like Seth Meyer's wife and I'm going to be like, okay, it's time to go to the hospital. And then we're going to be on our way. And then I'm going to have the baby in my <laughs> pants, like <laughs> right into my pants. Like, I, like, and I'm just going to be like, no, no, like that I get is close. <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be like giving birth, but like it'll be like that scene in Bridesmaids where she's in the wedding gown crossing the street, like it's happening. <laughs> Make sure you actually like, wear a wedding dress to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> like someone, someone filmed this for Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> So yeah, I mean that's my bruise. <laughs> <laughs> my recto vaginal birth. Yeah. <laughs> am I am I the first recto vaginal birth that you've had on the show? Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Oh my god, what an honor! What yeah. a responsibility! Oh my god, I hope I did. You limped it up. <laughs> if I I did I did it justice. I don't what is it in that sentence? <laughs> I, just, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The butt, the, the bird. Uh, yeah. The butt, the, <laughs> the story. Butt, the the butt story. The, I don't know if we're gonna name this one. I know. <laughs> oh. Rectal vaginal princess. <laughs> <laughs> Can I can I be a queen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I said but, monarch. <laughs> Recto vaginal monarch. Um yeah. Oh. No, it's and it's funny because uh also like being in like being a dancer, being in Pilates, like I've practiced yoga forever, like doing all of that. 
um, so, so many people asked me if I, like, I was going to have a home birth mm. or like, do, you know, go sort of that route. And I knew that I didn't want to do that, that I wanted to be in a hospital. And then like, I ended up with the story I had. <laughs> it's, it's not what people expect. And I think what they also don't expect is that I'm going to actually tell them. Yeah. You know, yeah. like people are like, oh, I pushed for like an hour and then it, you know, whatever. And I'm like, okay, so actually there were people on top of me <laughs> shoving down and then my, my entire undercarriage exploded. <laughs> like, um, yeah. And then when I woke up, I was like, why are you poking my ass on? And I threw up again. And then like, they're like, we're not glad to this. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's, that's what happened. <laughs> and yet I want to do this again, but again, different. It's going to be different. It's going to be different right, next so time. Good. Yeah. It's going to be so different. It's going to be a whole different experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is, one's different. Yeah. This is so wildly <clears throat> different than like our last podcast that we just did. And so I'm like feeling like re-energized from you because you're just hilarious and you need like <laughs> Thank you. You, you I want to like come to your improv. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like also your story is like a holy shit one. I it's big. Yeah, yeah, it is. I have I don't think I've ever met anyone that has a rectovaginal birth story because I, you know, I didn't have one. Therefore, yeah. I probably would have found moms that had one if I had one, kind of like you, like you said. Yeah. But, but it's like, mm -hmm. funny how like everyone comes here so differently. Like you've, you've come here with humor and it's like fun to like talk about these things. But then like the last one, we were both crying. So it's just, oh, just, yeah, I, I think that, in creating postpartum, in like working on like my show and my, I wrote a book called Unstuck from Understudy to the Study of Your Undercarriage. And in all of the content that I've created, I have really done a lot of the processing that mm -hmm. I don't break down about it but that I will say like again my son's gonna be three in October and that's recent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and it's sort of been like it's been like as cliche like like an onion like different layers kind of yeah. open mm -hmm. over time because like when something traumatic happens which like birth is a trauma like physically but also like spiritually energetically like this breaks you open yeah unlike anything else like it's a really unique and like tectonic shift um you can't handle that all at once like yeah. your your brain will explode so it's like different pieces like it it wasn't until I guess that was last summer that I really realized like the people on top of me had been so like I'd been holding on to that you know mm -hmm. um but that's why I think it's so important like having a space like this where we get to tell our birth stories and share them and hear them because it helps all of us process and move through whatever it is you need to move through now. And I think, I think the like really super incredible thing about motherhood, but it also is like, I it's relentless in so many ways is that like, I don't think that that sort of unraveling and peeling open ever stops. Yeah. Like, even when your kids are adults and, like, you're a grandparent, like, there's just, there's, oh, like, I, and you could look at that in so many ways and be like, again, why do I want that? Yeah. <laughs> tired just hearing about that, but also, like, <laughs> what, what a cool adventure to, like, learn about yourself and learn about others in that way you know yeah, mm -hmm. I love that I totally agree I feel like this past year I've been learning about myself in like more ways than I ever thought I could and I'm happy about that 
Like, let's yeah. change. Let's become cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, well, well, yeah, let's evolve. What? Yeah. How boring is staying the same? Amen. I, yeah. I remember like being told that like I changed after high school. I'm like, well, no shit. <laughs> I went away <laughs> to college. <laughs> it's like that, that cartoon that goes around that it's like a, a caterpillar and the butterfly and the caterpillar's like, you changed. And the butterfly's like, we're supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> like we are. Yeah. And it just, I think it's so tempting to like at each stage or like I mean I think it's sort of constant but then like something big happens right and then like you like adjust and then something big happens and I think it's so natural to want to just be like okay I did it I did it I'm here this is it like we search for that stability but it that's just for our own comfort because really everything is constantly changing Uh and I mean, again, that could be, uh, listen, sometimes I find that really freaking annoying. And then other times it's like, that's, that's the fun, you know? And again, I mean, bringing it back to improv, which I also didn't think this episode was going to be about, but you know, it's being in the moment. Yes. Okay. This is now the reality. So what if this, if this, then what? Yes, this is the reality. And here's how I'm going to handle it. I'm going to play to the top of my intelligence. I'm going to make statements and not ask questions. That's a good tip for toddlers. (laughs) Not, do you want to go to bed? It's bedtime. Do you want to walk to your room or should I carry you? Look at you. Now you get to make a decision. You're so (laughs) autonomous. It's bedtime. Like, (laughs) joke's on you, kid. (laughs) What book do you want to read? Okay. (laughs) Yeah, which book? Do you want to read this book or this? Oh, my God. You want to read a different book? Great idea. (laughs) Do you want to read it on the chair or the floor? (laughs) (laughs) Everything. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Kind of going back to that birth trauma you said. So I work like for a mental health practice in St. Louis. And so like I'll have people reach out to me and be like, you know, I have this going on, like anxiety, depression, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And last week, a woman was like, I have birth trauma. To give you a sense, though, my youngest is like three, almost four. And I, I have not worked through it. And I'm like, great. I'm glad that you're here. Like, let's get you started. So I just think. And especially like in motherhood, you're like just trying to survive. So yeah. there is also like no time for you to even <clears throat> understand it or make sense of it because mm-hmm. you're so consumed by somebody else. And that I'm glad you said that because it is it is true. And I think also just even giving the words like I like I had birth trauma, like I am a trauma survivor and I plan to. I have to change practitioners because my OB moved. Otherwise, I would see her again. But um, I plan to have an explicit conversation about that and be like, so here's the deal. Also, like, I have PTSD. I experienced birth trauma. Like, I'm going to need that approach in the OR and at every appointment. Like, we, like, and, and I've said, I said this to a PT. I was like, I'm going to make jokes. I'm going to make it seem like I am totally fine. And that is how you know I'm not fine. (laughs) So you have, do not let me try to take care of you during our session. Don't, that's, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try not to, I'm going to do it. I need you to take care of me. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that is what I need. And, and my PT is amazing. And she was like, got it. And I was like, great. You've already started that like uh, conversation of like being an advocate for yourself, though. Cause you yeah, know what you're coming to your next OB appointment with, or you know, if you decide to have another, you know what. And you're- and that's in the work that I do. I really believe that, it's, and especially after you've had a baby, but in any type of trauma, like. Con- liter- like connecting to your pelvic floor, your actual physical anatomy that we are taught to be disgusted by, ashamed of, keep secret, um, all of these things, right? But that also determine our value and our worth and our desirability in every facet of life. That if we actually become knowledgeable and educated and comfortable with it and take ownership of our bodies, 
that's what's going to enable us to find our voice to self-advocate. And through doing that, we'll be able to create change. But if we continue to stay in this place of, it's kind of ignorance about our own body. Like, even knowing your menstrual cycle, which I guess, you know, doesn't apply if you're on birth control. And I'm not saying go off birth control, but like knowing your rhythm, Mm -hmm. like we're not supposed to do that. Like we don't, but like we have one, it's called the infradian rhythm and it's real and it's a thing. And then you get your period. It feels like a heart attack, but don't tell anybody, (laughs) you know, like if we actually own this all together, right. And find a voice for that. We really can change the world. I just want to clip what you said and like have it in my mind forever. <laughs> that was beautiful. I thank you. That's that is that is my mission. Yeah. I love it. I'm on board. <laughs> Let's go. Set the world on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This was awesome. It was so good. Um, Oh my God. We've been talking for so long. I could talk to you forever. I know. I could talk to you forever. I, yeah. Whoa. It has <laughs> amazing. And like, just like that last clip, I just want to like say, <laughs> I think I'm going to do something with that if that's okay with you. Oh my God. I would love it. Yeah. Tag me or send it to me. I'll share it too. Tag me. Yeah. Just... <laughs> Put it everywhere. Tell the world. The people need to know. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Um. Well, perfect. So if you want to find Alyssa on Instagram, um, you can find her at Alyssa Alter, A-L-I-S-S-A-A-L-T-E-R. Um, Amy Puller of Vagina is right there in front of you. you <laughs> That's <know>. me. <laughs> That's me. And feel free to check out um, my show also called Alter Your Life or and Myth of Motherhood. Um and for anything else, DM me. I love hearing from you. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. And we'll link everything in our show notes as well. Yeah. So awesome. It'll be easy to find. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and being so um, open and receptive to hearing all about my butthole. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much again. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>